ma'am. She is an alumnus of St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, and IIM Indore, where she has completed her graduation and integrated program in business analytics, respectively. Ma'am is an experienced teacher and a mentor in the domain of actuarial sciences and business analytics. Ma'am has conducted several workshops and webinars in prominent colleges such as Meetibai College, Lady Sri Ram College for Women, IIM Indore, and St. Xavier's College, Kolkata. Ma'am has also cleared 11 out of 15 actuarial papers and has uh, secured all India rank one in CT7 business economics. We welcome you, ma'am, and we look forward to hearing from you and hope that uh, everyone learns from your experiences. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Gaurav, for such an amazing introduction. Um, firstly, I would like to just say that I'm really thankful and it feels really great uh, to be a part of this webinar and to talk to all of you all, uh, students of prestigious College of University of uh, Delhi and our country. So I really hope that this uh, webinar on data analytics will be a very enriching one for all of you present over here. I have uh, divided the entire session into six parts. So basically, we'll be first talking about what exactly uh, data analytics is all about. Uh, then what are the applications of data analytics in uh, different uh, domains? Um, what are the different tools that we commonly use in analytics? Uh, domain and then very important for all of us present over here what is the job prospects moving ahead in the analytics domain right um, also uh, very important is how as a student can you start at the beginners level how you can start your analytics journey and lastly we'll have the QA session all right so I'll just uh, share my screen um, with you all I just hope it is visible. Just let me know in the chat box. And uh, we'll be making a very interactive session. So I'll be asking you all some questions. I want all of you all to please answer the questions in the chat box. It will be a really, really interesting one uh, if you all participate. Um, so uh, basically, when we talk about data and business analytics, the very first thing that we need to understand is what is data? right uh, so here data uh, can be in its any form raw data when we say it can be audio it can be videos it can be visuals it can be the tweets it can be the whatsapp messages that you share it can be the google searches uh, that you make or it can be uh, maybe any um, uh, amazon searches which you are making so all these constitutes data right so this data in its raw form does not give us any proper insights right so here the word analytics comes in so analytics what it does is that it converts the data which is which is in its raw form uh, to better information which is used to derive useful insights to uncover different trends patterns draw different conclusions etc so just let me give you all a very quick example over here uh, so during ipl just like now ipl is going on so you might get a lot of offers from uh food apps like swiggy zomato right so what uh swiggy uh did as a part of a company what they did for their research is that they found out that uh people are ordering burgers from uh, McDonald's, but they're not ordering fries. So they introduced uh, offers on burgers and free fries, uh, French fries. And then they also uh, introduced different offers on your uh, mini pizzas, right? So these are all very prominent during the IPL season because that is what they have seen uh, friends, students, family sitting down and watching IPL and ordering these uh, food from these particular food joints. So that is how they used uh, their data of what people are ordering in different locations at what point of time in the year and then accordingly they are making these offers which are actually very much profitable for these companies. So that is how you convert the basic data into your information using analytics, right? So I uh, have, uh, now when we talk about data, um, you might have heard about big data, all of you all, those who have heard just a quick thumbs up or a hand raise, if you all have heard about big data, right? Okay, so we all have heard about 
great so we all have heard about big data right so when we talk about uh, big data what is big data it is just a data which is getting bigger and bigger in size it, it is huge in size and something which you cannot uh, keep at maybe using just one particular simple software so you need dedicated softwares and tools to handle manipulate this large quantity of data which we are generating so when we are talking about big data let us just uh, recap um, for the year 2021 that what happened in every one minute around the globe in the year 2021 so here you can see a, a pie chart over here so here we have a linkedin so linkedin uh, more than 9000 connections were made in just one minute over linkedin uh, there were more than 21 million messages that were sent on youtube there were more than 500 hours of content which were uploaded every single minute so uh, there were more than 2 lakh people tweeting over Twitter over uh, in this one minute of time. Amazon made 1.6 million worth of sale. So how people are actually, uh, you know, generating data every minute and it is increasing day by day with years and with time to come. So here, this data that we have, this huge size of data that we have is all this data being analyzed by us is it so do you do you anyone do you believe that all this data that we are generating in this world is being actually analyzed anyone just yes ma'am uh, it is being analyzed correct it is being analyzed but if you will be uh it is a very interesting thing to know that only not even 90 percent not even 90% of this data that is being generated is being actually utilized or being actually analyzed. So you can say just maybe minor uh, and 90% when I'm saying I'm actually underestimating it, not even 95% of the data that we generate across the globe is being analyzed. So just maybe 2 or 3% or maybe 1% of it is being actually analyzed by analysts. Uh, so data is huge, but the people who are actually analyzing it is really uh, small. Right. So then we talk about data analytics and when we're talking about so much of data being created around the globe, uh, what are the different sectors that actually now have started using uh, data analytics? So it is not only limited to finance. It is actually, you know, it is a broad uh, concept now, which is being used in healthcare, telecom, e-commerce. You have entertainment, you have government, you have insurance companies, you have education. All these different domains are using data, are using data analysis to grow for customer retention, for increasing their profits, minimizing their losses, and so on and so forth, right? Even people who are in HR, even people who are from the arts background are also using data a lot nowadays. So let us now, I'll give you examples of some great companies. Uh, you might have heard a lot in your daily life, which are actually using data analytics and how they're actually uh, converting this data into use, use, useful information, which is actually generating millions of them. Now, the very first thing which comes to our mind when we talk about entertainment is Netflix, right? Uh, which actually helped us to survive during the entire one year of lockdown. So all of you, those who are actually subscribers of Netflix, you might have got certain suggestions, right? Movie suggestions or series suggestions. So all these suggestions that we get are they same for all of us do you think are they same for me and you is it same it might be same for you and your friend but it might not be same for you and me or maybe for me and my mother right the netflix suggestions might be different for all of us depending on the users depending on the subscribers their age their demographics where they stay uh what they, what are, what is their past history what are their past searches what movies and series they have been watching so far what is their watch time so when i say watch time at a stretch uh what is the duration for which you are using netflix so all these things help netflix to analyze the data and then suggest you movies accordingly so this is known as again targeted advertising so i'll just give you an example over here uh some of you any one of you who has seen house of cards just quickly raise of hands anyone who has seen the uh, house of cards just a quick raise of hands i most have heard about it all right okay so most of you have heard about it definitely and uh, might have also um, you know used or uh, seen uh house of cards over here so uh the 
American version of House of Cards, which actually helped Netflix gain millions of dollars. So how it actually came into effect? Now, the British version of House of Cards uh, was making really good rounds. Uh, and people were also at the same time watching series and movies uh, starring Kevin Spacey. So why not combine the David Finster, who was the director, and Kevin Spacey and produce the American version of House of Cards? So they actually uh, led this, you know, full use of analytics as to what people are watching, what people are liking, and combine all these factors together. So definitely, uh, it actually, you know, uh, led to this amazing series, American version of House of Cards, which actually uh, bagged millions for Netflix. So that is how, you know, people are using analytics and data uh, to uh, gain market and to gain market share. Then when we talk about e-commerce, the most the giant e-commerce uh, website is Amazon, right? So there is nothing which you cannot find over Amazon. It is it believes in everything under one roof. Um, so here, uh, millions of people are uh, buying products from Amazon. Uh, and when you open Amazon, you again get certain recommendations of different products. It might be cell phones, it might be books, it might be DVD, it might be uh, earphones, anything. And actually, you won't believe you might be thinking about something and you actually, when you open Amazon, you might get the same thing over there. Is it? Is this happened to anyone? Is this happened to everyone? Anyone that if you're even if you're talking about something with your friends, maybe I'm talking with my friend too. I want to purchase uh, earphones and maybe when I open Amazon the next day, I see uh, uh, earphones on the top of the recommendation. This is what happens to us. And if you just uh, uh, become aware of these products, the, these things that actually happens to all of us. How is this happening? This is happening with, again, the use of data that we are generating. Now, I am maybe not a user of Amazon, but there are millions of other users of my age, of my uh, category, my gender, maybe living in my location nearby, maybe uh, earnings exactly same as what I am earning right now. So what they are buying, what are their uh, you know, products that they are ordering from Amazon, those products are something which even I might use. So that is being shown to me in my recommendations. That is how they use, they divide the entire customers into different groups or niches. And then you as a new user enter uh, the world of Amazon, you uh, will put in certain details, your name, your gender, your age, and your mobile mobile number which will tell uh, which will which will tell amazon that in which location you actually live in your your address all these information are enough for amazon to understand that which group you belong to and what are the recommendations that they should show you so that is how the recommendation of amazon is working right it's really amazing and it's really interesting to know these things. Now, now when we talk about uh, data analytics, the oldest sector using analytics is finance risk analytics. So for example, uh, you want to, all of you over here, anyone who's planning to go for MBA or masters, just quickly raise your hands. Anyone who's planning to go for MBA or masters. So you all also might be planning, very good, thank you. So you all might also be planning uh, to go for student loans, right? Not all of you uh, will go uh, for MBA without a student loan, right? You all might be uh, going for uh, student loans. How uh, the bank will be ready to provide you student loan is very important. They will see your past data. What is the past data they'll be looking at? They'll be looking at your marks in class 10, marks in class 12, how you have performed in your college, which college you are coming from, which colleges you are applying for, uh, for your master's, your MBA, what is your maybe CAT score, what is your other examination scores, all these things where you have already done your internships. Um, so all these things will help bank to analyze uh, your Sybil score or uh, basically the score that will assess your credit worthiness, whether after the MBA or after master's, uh, what approximately what job you will be getting, what will be your per annum salary. And on the basis of that, they will give you student loan and at a particular level of interest. So that is how risk analytics works, where they analyze the past data to predict to manage to control future risk that we face, right? Then um, 
when we talk about health sector right so uh, it is a very common uh, it, it it feels really weird that is health sector also using data analytics definitely yes and health sector is a sector which is actually day by day increasingly using data analytics uh, nowadays one company i can give you an example of the propeller smart inhaler so they have these smart inhalers what they do is these inhalers are sensor based right so when the person is using these inhalers it captures not only the duration and the time at which it is being used but also the uh, climatic conditions the weather conditions and all of these data are transferred into a mobile app which you can then show show it to your doctors and accordingly they will give you the medications so that is how it is also being used when we are talking about covid right some of you might have heard doctors saying that you don't have you are not covid positive but you are on a verge of it so i will suggest to isolate uh you yourself for 7 days that is what we used to hear a lot right so you are not covid positive still doctor is suggesting you to isolate yourself what is the meaning of this this is all basis of data that there are certain elements there are certain criteria which are not suggesting that you are covid positive but you are on the verge of it maybe so you should take protection for that so these things are again using data as to how doctors are now sure that you are actually uh, having uh, a particular disease or not right then we have a uh, speech recognition google assistance uh, all of you anyone just raise your hands or maybe quickly in the chat box if you have heard uh, seen a lot of memes going on for alexa on instagram or if you are using facebook like there are a lot of memes that we get nowadays on alexa right um, so What, what, how can you say that Alexa is responding in a particular manner? Uh, in in maybe they are giving us Bollywood movie lines and all these things happen with analytics with time, right? Because you are teaching Alexa to react in a particular manner, to respond in a particular manner, and that is how it is building up and responding with day day. It is getting better day by day as it is gaining more and more data. Initially, when it started, it will not. It was not was not performing. uh great in the indian market but as and when they collected information and data over time you can just see the transformation that it has uh, been made and how it has been performing recently that is all again using data and analytics so when we talk about data is it only about getting the data and understanding it no there is a entire process which goes behind uh, the entire uh, data and business analytics so the very first thing is collecting the data manipulating it understanding it making it fit for use this entire process of collection and making the data fit for use itself constitutes around uh, 60 to 70% of the time of any analyst or maybe someone who is into data analysis the next thing which comes in is to build a model on this data uh, this model will construct uh, will constitute of what all variables what all information do you actually need and what are the informations which are redundant which you don't want to use in your model after you have constructed a model you test run so for example when the vaccination came up for covid uh, they were saying that it's on it's it's on its testing stage so it was it was testing different samples across the country and how it is reacting different age groups different locations gender how the vaccination is being performed performing that is known as the trial run stage and then or the testing stage and then finally they came up with the final model or the final version of the vaccination so that is how uh, you know data analytics is all about you build a model you trial and test run it and then you get the final version which you obviously have to present to your seniors to your clients to your managers in a particular manner and that is what data visualization comes in visualizing your final answers which visualizing your final data in order to make decisions right um so nowadays any one of you if you are reading a lot newspapers you might have heard something about esg can anyone just quickly give me a full form of esg anyone esg if you are reading a lot you might have heard this esg all right something related to environment i guess 
good so it is basically environment social and governance so nowadays people have become so much of aware like young investors uh, they are all they are willing to invest in something called as ethical uh, investments uh, responsible investments you might have heard these words or you will he hear these words a lot uh, now responsible investments ethical investments what are these things these are basically investments into cleaner safer environmental friendly companies companies who are uh, you know uh, carrying out their activities which are uh, environmental friendly which are actually you know uh, concerned about the clim climatic changes and everything so this is again something which has come up nowadays when people are actually seeing analyzing the data as to how the uh, climate has been uh, performing over the years and how it has been deteriorating over the years so that is how this new words new things come up and it's ever increasing right there are climatic uh, there are there are climate modeling recently if anyone you, of you have heard climate modeling people are actually modeling their businesses with respect to how the climate will be or the how the climate is actually is right now uh, with people thinking about uh, removing of diesel and petrol cars government thinking about removing petrol and diesel cars and getting electric cars how these things will affect your businesses it is all analyzing data sets right so now let's move into the different tools which i think all of you or most of you have doubts in as to what tools should i learn being in my college in my second year in my third year uh, which tools should i start with so here i have taken some very important tools tools which are used very commonly and widely in the analytics domain which you will be using a lot moving ahead out of your college uh, the very first and the very important one is excel so when we talk about excel excel is something uh, you can say which is a best friend or you can say something which is used by all the companies across the globe um everyone you meet who is working somewhere might have used excel some point of time in their life right so it is actually the first step or maybe the entire base of the entire analytics domain so excel is not only helpful in uh, keeping your data manipulating your data but also creating amazing visualizations especially people who want to go into finance domain uh, will definitely use data and not only them in fact everyone uh, will use excel in their lives because it is something which is very basic and yet very very prominent which will help you to create amazing visualizations store your um, data in one place creating amazing looking reports etc so that is why i think those who want to start with their journey should start always with excel basic to advanced and there is no one trust me no one will ever tell you that i know excel completely there is no one who can say this because it is so vast and something which is some something which has so many features and functions to use right so this is the very basic and the most important tool which we use and it is also used for financial uh, modeling and valuation uh, for example companies when they are searching for different investments different projects and they want to model how these different uh, different projects and different investments uh, will give them returns over the year financial modeling is what they perform in excel right so it is used for forecasting for budget creations etc now when we talk about excel uh, there are some routine jobs that we perform every day or maybe weekly or maybe monthly so how these routine jobs how you can minimize your errors that is one thing and second thing how you can minimize your time how you can save your time you can uh, you know reduce costs using vba is it is the back end of excel you can simply write a few lines of code and automate things in excel which you are performing regularly monthly or maybe quarterly right so that is why vba again a very very important part of your and if you are all are active on your linkedins you might have seen a lot of job postings where the requirements clearly states that you must be knowing or proficient with vba so it is not difficult i will be guiding you how to move ahead as a student but it is something which is generally used it's a back end of coding uh, back end of excel sorry which is used to automate things right then we have python python is something uh, which is 
uh, which has grown over the years, over the last five, six years. And it's a never ending story. So when I say a never ending story, you can perform actually anything on Python, be it, uh, you know, finance modeling, be it your web development, be it your online trading, algo trading, game development, all these things can actually be carried out machine learning uh, all these things can actually be carried out in python it is so versatile tool um, and it is very very uh, interesting uh, the speed the productivity everything is really amazing with python so there are top companies across the globe who are actually using python for their data analysis right then we have our programming very much similar to python but again uh, the community or the people uh, who are using our programming is again very very vast it's an old tool older than that of python uh, now it is basically used by statisticians but also used by people who want to create models the only thing or the only difference is that r is a little easier to understand uh, than python other than that both are almost the same the only difference is that the level of coding the different functions other than that what you can perform in python you can perform the same things in r programming as well so it is free of cost you can download it uh, without any cost and it is very very user friendly you don't have to know uh, difficult coding languages to uh, run your r programming codes and again the top companies have mentioned some companies over here who are actually using r in their everyday operations right so uh, the next thing is machine learning i my i i think all of you present over here might have heard about machine learning somewhere or the other maybe uh, in your college maybe your friends are talking about it maybe online you've seen so what is actually machine learning i uh, will try to simply explain what machine learning is all about in very very simple words so all of you have uh, heard about uh, driverless cars right just quick raise of hands if you have heard about driverless cars right great great all of you so driverless cars is it safe uh, is, is is it safe to have a driverless car uh, roaming around the streets yes uh, now that is again a question a debatable question but how are they developing this driverless cars so there is artificial intelligence behind it i'm not going into artificial intelligence right now we'll be talking about machine learning so here uh, the car when it stops it should stop at the red light it should move ahead at the green light it should know when to turn right it should know when to turn left it should know if there is a bumper ahead or if there is a highway ahead all these things your car should know before it starts to move on the road right now how will it collect this information again using the past data the driverless cars are being run all day all around in different locations in different conditions in different places by different people so that all these information all the different data that is being collected by the car is actually then you can you can use this data while on the road so that is how they use the past information past road condition past data and uh, actually put it into effect when you have your driverless cars moving around the road so that is how machine learning plays a very very important part what is machine learning you are making your machine which is the car over here learn how to drive on the road that is what machine learning is all about teaching your machine and here when we say uh, uh, what is the human contact human contact is you are the one who know how to drive the car on the road so you are teaching your machine how to do it for you so that is how machine learning came into its effect and it's very very interesting uh, concept uh, what machine learning is all about now just a quick question these are the different companies which are actually using machine learning again all the top companies are using machine learning and not only top companies we have middle segment companies which are using machine learning to build models for customer retention and for expanding their markets now one quick question a very interesting one i want all of you all to use your chat box and quickly put it down uh, 
suppose you're visiting to a different city or a different country and you want to stay at a comfortable hotel right so you are going into your any uh, online uh, hotel booking sites um, you all know the names maybe go ibibo maybe make my trip all these sites and you are searching for hotels so now there are people who also look for the reviews of different hotels so what are these reviews that you will be looking for what are the key words that you will be looking for uh, before booking a hotel for yourself So Gaurav has asked me, what is the role of machine learning in data analytics? Uh, the role of machine learning in data analytics is that it is analyzed. Machine learning is a concept. It's a it's a uh, it's a concept that you are teaching your machine to act in a particular manner. You are actually creating uh, models in order to do so. So uh, you can say that machine learning is entirely the part of analytics or analytics is a part of machine learning it starts from the very basic data collection uh, making your data fit for use building the model uh, trial and testing uh, the entire model so these these steps belong to your machine learning and then finally you are actually uh, you know um, uh, putting these results in the form of beautiful visualization. So machine learning is the part which uh, constitutes of making a model, building a model, uh, trial and testing uh, the model and making it fit for use and checking the accuracy of the model. I will quickly at the end of the session, towards the end of the session, I'll give you an example of a model which I created, a very simple one, just at the end of the session, right? So, okay, uh, we positive review about the staff, cleanliness, uh, good parking space. So these are the things which are coming up in the chat box. Uh, cleanliness, definitely good food, good Wi-Fi. All these things are the words which are looking for before booking a hotel for you, for yourself. Now, what if I tell you that instead of reading hundreds of reviews, I give you a good uh, word cloud, something like this. Now, just by looking at this word cloud, you can decide that whether you want to book a hotel, uh, whether you want to book a room at a particular hotel. So what do you see over here? We see clean, we see room, we see comfortable, we see bed, we see bathroom. So all these words which are highlighted, which are bigger in sizes, tells us that these are the words which occur frequently in the reviews of the uh, people who stayed at the particular hotel so spacious comfortable all these words and by looking at these words now you will be delighted you'll be happy and book the hotel for yourself right so this is known as your word cloud which you can again create using python or using our programming now here what clouds what they do is that this is known as nlp or natural language processing something which is really interesting and maybe in one or two years it will be something which will be again a common word common use term uh, here what they do is they analyze the different uh, reviews or maybe the different tweets different text messages and uh, or maybe different uh, audios they analyze them they you know uh, clean the data in a particular manner so it's fit for use, build a model and get the output. Similarly, here it did the same thing. Machine learning is actually used over here. So what they do is uh, you get different reviews, right? I'm cleaning the different reviews. I'm removing the connecting words like is and the, all these things are not required. I'm removing these words. I'm taking out the important words. I'm building a frequency table and then I'm creating the word cloud. That is how it works. NLP, it is very interesting. And again, uh, machine learning is being used over here. This is something which is known as word cloud, right? So, all right, thank you so much. Moving ahead, uh, the different tools are SQL. So again, SQL is something which is very, very user friendly. Yes. Ma yes. Ma'am, but this word cloud has a, a font. I'm sorry, I cannot hear. Uh, is place. word cloud? Can you please repeat your question? Okay, you can mention in the chat box.
all right so the next thing is sql again something which is very very user friendly uh, and it uses words like to construct codes it uses words like select delete insert all these simple simple words it uses and it is actually used to manage large data bases which you cannot use it in your excel manipulate the data and get useful insights out of it that is why excel and sql is something which is again used by all the major top companies across the globe then we have tableau and power bi so these are the two important tools for data visualization so when i say visualizing your data is very very important these two are one of the tools which actually helps you to see your data clearly i have taken an example over here i will show you all at the end of the ppt that how you can actually use these uh, to create amazing dashboards because see uh, having lots of numbers models is not sometimes presentable or you cannot communicate these to layman who right people who do not have much idea about the models so what they believe is they believe in looking at different charts they they believe in looking second uh all right so um are there questions any all right so uh sorry uh so here we are looking at tableau and power bi which are the most two amazing tools which are used to create these amazing uh, dashboards and uh it is very very friendly uh very very easy you don't need any coding uh to use these and again something which is used a lot recently then we have ms office tools there are different ms office tools like ms word powerpoint outlook all these things will again help you to maintain to keep to balance uh, your data it builds trust reliability because obviously it is something which is used by uh, more than 90% of the companies worldwide then we have g suite it's an online platform uh, you have you might have heard about google sheets google forms all these things google docs which actually help you to retain data and you can easily share them across with other people uh, we have tally which is again used to you know uh, keep an account of your transactions uh, so these are different tools uh, uh, which you will be using um, a lot uh, if you want to step into the world of analytics or even if not somewhere or the other you will be definitely using it going down the line if you are pursuing your masters degree if you are pursuing your mba or if you are going for any jobs right so when we talk about jobs now what are the different job opportunities in india so when we talk about indian uh, big data analytics market it is about to reach you can say 16 billion dollars by 2025 and the world big data analytics is about to reach 103 billion dollars market by next year itself so you can imagine the amount the quantity of data that we'll be generating and only 1 or 2% of it being utilized or analyzed says that how much more we need how many more analysts we actually need to analyze this huge data that we are generating right also the poor quality of data analysis is causing indian firms around 332 billion rupees every year because they have the data but they are not able to store it manage it manipulate it or analyze it for their betterment that is why they are losing out this um uh, on losing out this great opportunity of analyzing the data so 95% of the businesses need to manage this un unstructured data that is the major problem which they have lack of data or maybe uh, you know lack of analysis of this data that we have so uh, if we talk about data management uh, india ranks 58th globally and which is slightly just better than nigerian countries like nigeria and philippines so you can say uh, how uh, you know there are 50 more than 50 countries who are on top of us in terms of data management and the amount of data india is creating is obviously huge but there is uh, the managing portion of data is very very less so it demands the demand in india is for more than 2 lakh jobs is being created every year in the field of big data analytics and uh, you all might have you know just a quick question a quick thing um, those who have uh, used your cell phones those small cell phones maybe when you were very young or in schools um, 
you we used to have this one mb or uh or maybe uh two mb data remember we used to just switch on the internet do whatever we want and to just switch off our internet and nowadays we don't even bother to switch off our internets right because the internet is all just like it's it's like free for us right that is when geo you know uh, understood the uh, amount of data or the you can say importance of data and they came up with free internet for all of us and that is how you can just uh, just you all know the success story of geo and how it led to merger of two big giants vodafone and idea um and then how geo just went on top of the game uh, by providing us free internet because they understood that data is the oxygen for today's world you need data everywhere you go so that is how you actually you know use this opportunities which you have to uh earn uh and to win millions so now these are the different uh companies which are using data and business analytics which are hiring people who are into data and business analytics in india and across the globe um then we have uh the next thing is uh and we are moving towards the last segment uh which is how to become a data analyst what it takes to become a data analyst and me as a student can how i can become a data analyst right so here the very first thing is uh, and this was a question uh, i think which was raised by many of you on the google forms is first thing is to have a good understanding of all the tools so when i say good understanding of all the tools does not mean that you can just open python and write big big uh, lines of codes or maybe just open sql and run big big uh, uh queries or big big uh codes right that is not what we are asking for what we are asking for is to have a basic knowledge of what python is how it is run how you can uh write different codes even if you just look for it on google and just maybe you know uh just make few differences in your code and put it down in your python so all these tools are very important for you to know but there should be only one tool which you can make your best friend so uh, we have lots of friends and we just have maybe one or two best friends right similarly here you should know you should understand all the tools uh, maybe most of these tools and you should make one of these tools as your best friend so suppose if you ask me my best friend is r programming i love uh working on our programming i'm not very proficient with python although i know how to work on python i have created projects on python but i am not very much comfortable with python as i'm comfortable with our programming so our programming is my best friend you have to make any of these tools as your best friend to move ahead and to uh, continue your journey in analysis right now the third and the very very important step is to understand your own business domain so any one of you who are coming from humanities or who are coming from hr anyone who are coming from marketing anyone who is coming from uh, medical anyone who is coming from finance commerce all these you should know your business domain very nicely i should understand my sector i should understand uh, you should understand your sector your risk your uh, domain very nicely so that the data which are being created in your domain you can use that data with these tools right so that is again a very very important thing you should know your business domain very very nicely you should have a good understanding of your uh, business domain and then next thing is to have a analytical and logical mindset because we are dealing with data so we should have that questioning or curious mindset we should always uh, be eager to solve problems right to find solutions for business problems right and how all these things will build is by spending approximately on average 2 to 3 hours every day or maybe 1 to 2 hours is also sufficient if you're spending it every day learning these tools uh you know uh, 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 building your honing your skills in your different uh, business domain or any domain which you belong to and then applying that data into these tools now how you as a student can get data 
and can actually apply. So there is a very uh, good site which you all can use is Kaggle. Now Kaggle is something uh, which is used not only by students and beginners, but also by people who are sitting in US, sitting in India, and they are big analysts who are creating amazing models, who are actually predicting that who will be the next US president and you actually win millions if you predict the correct answer. So that is how uh, Kaggle is being used around the globe. So you as a student can just log in to Kaggle, create your own account and there uh, you will get a section of uh, getting started. This getting started section is for the students who are learning, who are just stepping into the world of analytics. And what you need to do is you can build your first machine learning model. You will get free unlimited data sources over here. All these data sources which you have uh, will also have certain questions uh, attached to it. So you can solve those questions using your own models. But then before moving into Kaggle, uh, the very first thing is to learn to understand these different tools which are there. And then only you can go and apply your skills in Kaggle. And it is a learning experience. You are not there for earning. You are just there for learning, right? And then after a few years, once you get good at it, you can also earn from building these different models. So that is how you as a student, you as a beginner can start your journey with Kaggle. And before that, obviously you should uh, know all the steps as I mentioned before. So this is how you can uh, move ahead in your journey. And now I'm actually open to all your questions. Before that, I quickly uh, just want to take five minutes and show you all different tools and how I have built simple models in these tools. So the very first thing which I'll show you is Excel. So here, this is uh, my Excel uh, spreadsheet. I hope it is visible to everyone. I hope it's visible to everyone. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay, thank you so much. So here we have, you can see uh, the data which I have. And um, so more than 88,000 rows are there. So it's a data from a FMCG uh, company uh, on their different products, sold different volumes. I have used this data and, you know, uh, going through all these steps, I have reached this particular step which i where i have actually found out the full delivered margin or basically you can say this is the margin profit which i am earning which this company is earning now this is the entire report which you have right suppose i am presenting this report to you you are my manager you want to just know the amount of profit which was generated in the month of january for example so i have taken over here few slicers i have used pivot tables in order to create this is the pivot table so i have used this pivot table uh, to create the entire modeling portion and now what you can see over here is suppose i want uh, for january month what was my uh, profit for the month of january or maybe suppose if i want uh, for a particular client suppose for mehta i want for this particular client, how much profit is my company generating from this client? How much profit is being generated uh, from a particular brand? So all these things are very simple to analyze in um, pivot table. Now, who says that Excel is not great? By looking at this, I'm pretty sure that you all are very much intrigued as to how you can actually use Excel for amazing, uh, you know, uh, interaction with this particular dashboard. Now, the next thing uh, which I want to show you all, which is the back end of Excel, right? So here I want to create a report. So I have a sales report from four different regions and using these sales report uh, or the sales data, which I have, I want to create two reports, one for my regional manager and one for the top level manager. Now, these two reports which I create is done monthly. I do this monthly sales reporting every month, for example. And I want to uh, just, you know, minimize my time. So what I have done, I've used few lines of code, which may, which might have took me three, four hours or maybe a whole day. But after that, you can use this every month. And in within the just few seconds, you can create these different uh, 
reports right so firstly i need to import data just with a click of a button i will import so there are four spreadsheets i'm importing just two of it for the time being so it will just take a few seconds and you can see how data is being imported successfully then for example i want to create a report so there are two regions europe and america on which i can create a report so let's create for america i click on create report and the moment you click on create report you will see that it says the files are created in the same directory as this workbook so basically the uh, same directory that we were in earlier um let me just quickly open it up for you all um so we have see so we have these two reports the manager report and the regional manager report which has been uh, created with just a click of a button i'll quickly open the documents and show you all so this is how it looks like this is the report which i have created for the regional manager it shows me the uh, bar chart is there which shows me the customers and the sales which were made so there are two companies meta creations and uh urban so the, these are the profits and these are the sales which are being made so this is how you can just create the reports within a few seconds and share it with your uh managers right and it actually saves a lot of time because if i would have done this manually it would have taken me around the entire day and you might get some errors so how to minimize that by just using VBA and you can use this every month, right? So this is how your VBA look, looks like. Now, when I was talking about machine learning and some of you asked me how machine learning is used. Now, this is my uh, favorite portion. I love machine learning and I love our programming. So what I have done, I've taken a very simple thing for you all. Here I have a Irish data set. So basically how the data set looks like we have different species of plants or flowers. There are three different species of plants. And for each plant, we have uh, the length, sepal length and width and petal length and width so now i want to predict that for example i have been given with just the sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width using this information can i predict what species this particular plant will belong to that this is a model which i want to create all right so i have been given with these information can i predict the species this particular model i've tried to create using a decision tree so a decision tree somewhat looks like this uh, you can create a better version of this as well so you start over here where it, where it asks you is the petal length less than 2.6 if yes then it belongs to this category which is setosa if it is greater than 2.6 then uh, they will ask you another question what is the petal width is petal width less than 7.7 then it will belong to versicolor or it will belong to virginica these are the three different species which you are dealing with so that is how just you know maybe you can see just a few lines of code very very simple very very simple lines of code uh, easy to understand and i've created this amazing decision tree for myself right that is how you use machine learning build models in your r programming now uh with the, with our programming i will also try to show you all over here uh python so those who are finance enthusiasts people who are uh you know investing any one of you who are actually uh, actively investing in share market or you all like to follow share markets just a quick raise of hands very good okay most of you all right all right okay so um you might have heard beta values right of shares now how can you on a real time basis cal calculate beta values so here what i've taken is i've taken information from yahoo finance right so it will be collecting past information past information meaning the share prices maybe i've taken uh, so you can see the dates which i've taken i've taken uh, dates from 2015 to 2020 so it's nearly 6 years of data which i've taken um over here and using this data i'm trying to get the beta value of the share so those who are not very much uh aware of this word beta value tells you how uh you can measure the riskiness basically of a particular share or you can say you can measure the variability of a share how the share price will move as your market is moving 
right so higher the beta value it means that your share price will be very variable with respect to the market right so here i have taken shares of tcs i've taken uh, infosys and then what i have done is i've taken the beta value of these particular uh, shares over here so using this uh, so basically i've used tcs and this is the beta value of tcs which i am getting so that is how i've used python a few lines of code and on a real time basis you can actually just change the dates you can change the name of the shares and you will get the answer that is how we use python again very very simple something it looks like this it is very simple and lastly i will show you all uh, power bi how you can use power bi to you know uh, visualize your data so here i have sales report from uh, different uh, regions so you can see there are different regions we have greater manchester we have uh, so, uh, south yorkshire we have um, west midlands and different regions and there are different years over here which gives us the sales data right and we can see the graph over here so which years gave me the highest sales which region gave me the highest sales now here for example i just want the information this is what i'm presenting to you and it looks very interesting if the same thing would have been in the form of tables it would have looked very dull right so suppose you ask me that i just want to see the information for the last year so i will just drag the slicer and it will give me information for maybe just 2016 so this is how you're getting the information just for 2016 and again and this is something which is very very simply used even you can use it even i can use it anyone who even does not understand much about power bi can easily use it and suppose i want the region wise report as well of greater manchester i will just simply you know uh, get the region wise report. So this is the region wise report, which I'm getting for greater Manchester over here over the years, how greater Manchester has performed in terms of sales. So this is how we use Tableau uh, and Power BI for visualizing data and creating amazing dashboards, which you see over here. So this was just a quick insight. Uh, which I wanted to give you all, share with you all, different tools, how it looks like, how simple it is. And there is no uh, thing as such, you should have a coding history before starting your journey in the world of data analytics, right? So with this, we uh, end the webinar and I am now ready to um, open, your, open to your questions. So I already have got certain questions in the, uh, form which you all filled other than that uh, i'll be just checking the input message box um so i think one question uh which was being asked the most is how as a beginner how as a student we can start our uh, journey so which i've already answered i hope as to how you can you know uh, as a beginner level you can start your journey learning these different tools first having a good knowledge of your own business domain and then i've also given you one resource where you can actually go and work uh, with lots of data right um, i suppose uh, there were questions like uh, uh, in economics there was one or two questions in economics how we can use data analytics so have you all heard words about econometrics so what econometrics means is that using lots of data and uh, understanding the relationships between different variables different uh, and this uh, uses again data this uses again machine learning somewhat building models this uses mathematics this uses statistics and this uses economics knowledge there you you are seeing how this different variables like gdp inflation interest rates um, per capita income how these uh, different variables will act together how are these correlated and how it will help your company to increase profits this is known as econometrics where you are using all these things together right so uh, there were questions uh, on the jobs which i have already shown you now one thing one very very common question which i was getting is that uh, if i am from if i am not from an engineering background and i hope and i think all of you are are from not from engineering background over here or not from the science background so can i actually pursue data analytics so firstly i will just like to tell you all my story so i'll take two minutes i will not bore you all i will just quickly tell you all 
my story so i was also from commerce background always uh, although i liked physics a lot but then i ended up taking commerce and uh, i was someone who was never into laptops who, who was never into pcs who, who even i was someone who never used to like playing video games right so i was very scared of technology as such but you won't believe in my second year someone like me who never imagined will be writing codes i started with excel then i started with r programming i started learning these and at that point of time there was there was much there was not much awareness about the, these different tools but one thing which led me into learning these different tools is that i was very uh, inquisitive about these different data which we have right so i was always asking questions like very silly questions although uh, like why are there many, there are so many birthdays coming on the, coming up in the month of september why is this particular thing happening in a particular way so these very silly questions which used to come up in my mind very very silly questions and then later on um, i started reading few articles as to you know how you can use this data and this gives you a lot of insights and that is how firstly i started learning different tools and then i started you know applying uh, these different data getting it from different sources and applying it within these different tools so that is how it started building up so i was never from a coding background never from an engineering background but i am someone who can sit and write the codes and i am if I, even if i am not able to write a certain code i can definitely go and make a google search for that search for codes and copy paste and just change it 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 a bit and start performing my model so you analyst is not someone who is a hard code it, it, who is a hard coder you can say who writes codes all day analyst is not such a person analyst is someone who is analyzing the data who should have the knowledge of business domain someone who is a data scientist might not be a data analyst when we are talking about a data scientist that person it can write multiple lines of code but that person does not have the business acumen or that person does not know which data to use how to convert this data into a business decision that is what an analyst does right an analyst understands business acumen and they are the one who guides these data scientists as to this is how my data should look like so if you want to guide your junior or maybe not junior if you want to guide someone you should also understand that tool right you can just not go and guide uh, blindly you should understand these tools so that is where you know learning these tools will come in then only you can sit down and guide someone as to how you want your data to look like so no engineering no science in order to go into the world of data analytics but yes if you want to become a data scientist then you should have a uh, science background you should be comfortable with computer computer science because then you are a hard coder you sit down you write codes full day you understand all the intricacies of that particular tool which a data analyst might not be aware of right so that is how the entire thing actually uh, works uh, you coming from a and also when we talk about hr nowadays hr are ones who are using i recently made a project on hr i have a list of all the employees which employee should get promoted and which employee should not get promoted on the basis of different data what can be this data quickly uh, i just want to end the session now and quickly i want answers in the chat box what data do you need sorry their performance performance and how you can measure the performance by maybe the amount of profit they have been able to generate for the company uh the education level uh or you can the value they are adding. correct value they are adding to the company how uh they can add value to the company if they are coming up with very good are the targets being met very good so all these different uh things are there even things like gender age uh past uh experience um occupy uh, uh exactly what level are you in in the company um years of work experience and uh, extra knowledge do you have so all these uh resources wasted very good so basically resource utilization who is utilizing the better uh, resources in a better way so all these things will help me 
to make an unbiased decision as to which employee should get promoted right so that is how it is being used in hr as well so there is no field i think now which is not using data currently everyone is and everyone is analyzing it as well and we don't need any engineering or coding background over here to step into the world if i can actually write codes and if uh, my 10 years back self will never have imagined me writing codes or me performing tasks in our programming so i think everyone can do it if if you have that mindset right so any any further questions you'll have you'll want to uh, answer uh, ma'am uh, like yeah, data me. analytics is a very dynamic field due to the involvement of technology and everything so there are rapid changes happening so as a data analyst how do you cope with the changes because there are changes happening literally every day in the technology updation and right. automation right very right Right. Very, very, I think this is one of the very important and very good questions that you have asked, Gaurav. So before answering your question, I will just ask you all one question. Is that any one of you who has a doctor in your family, uh, you will see that they are continuously reading or uh, they are continuously, you know, uh, researching. Anyone who has a CA in their family. I, I think all of you, all of us have have a CA in our families, right? So they are who are into tax, who are into uh, auditing. They are reading, they are researching, right? With the new tax laws coming up, GST coming up, all these things are again something which changed their life in terms of their job opportunities, right? So everyone who is uh, working has to do a basic research, even someone who owns a small store who is selling uh, groceries for example even they have to have awareness of the market what is the current market price going on so we learn every day so i can never say that i know our programming entirely i'm someone who is learning every day there are new packages coming up in our programming new functions coming up in excel every day every year it is getting updated so i have to be aware so where this uh, thing will come from is again if you are a curious person if you like asking questions if you like solving problems if you are someone who uh, is always you know your mind is always thinking about it but it is not something that i will tell you which is very difficult anywhere you go if you're even going into any particular domain you have to work daily and your work involves researching your work involves reading right so that is how we cope up with it and i think everyone will have to do will uh, is actually doing that in all the spheres of their lives right but thank you so much for a very very good question that you've asked um, thank you ma'am are the commerce background uh, less preferable by company? Uh, I will not say so, Gaurav. Uh, for example, let me, uh, you know, divide, uh, quickly answer it in one minute. Suppose you are from a CA and you are pursuing CA, for example. You might be going into auditing, might be going into uh, taxation or anywhere you like, investment banking. You will use Excel. You will use Python or maybe using R programming or maybe SQL so you are definitely going to use these tools so just open linkedin and when you see different job opportunities not only related to science but related to ca mba actuaries anyone hr anyone marketing advertising there is one requirement always present which is related to this technology or any of these softwares right so nothing as such that if you're coming and in fact honestly if you're coming from commerce background you have that business acumen you have that knowledge about different you know profitability you cannot explain profitability very simply to a science student as you can do to a commerce student so you can actually understand the business so why not put these two things together your uh, business acumen and the tools you know together to analyze it right so uh, i have put a mail id uh, where you all can contact uh, i will sharing i will be sharing a, a business number also with you all if you all have any doubts you all can uh, post it over here and uh, you have vast data present uh, sometimes some data are not correct so i will suggest that 
you know uh, not make a biased opinion that only science students can uh, go into the world of analytics there is nothing as such um, right so you all can just make a note of these two uh, 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 gmail account i've given you and i've shared my not my number i've shared the business number with you all so you all can have if you all have any query you can just email us right um, any other questions if you all want to ask any other questions i hope uh, it was a very enriching session and i was able to answer most of your queries um, and if you have any further questions you can definitely contact us on this particular number right thank you so much ma'am anything else that was a very informative session so and i believe everyone benefited from